Hi, it's Sean, the Fluency Awesomizer. This is the Coding Multisyllabic Words, episode 104. And I've got four words I'm going to take a look at. But first today, I want you to get ready to read a passage I've written. All right? I want you to read this right out loud and get ready to click pause to give yourself plenty of time. All right. Here it is. Click pause and read this out loud. All right, were any of those words tricky to read? Keep watching if so. In this episode, I'm going to review these four words from that passage I just showed you. All right, show you some information and some strategies you might want to recall next time you're stuck on words like those when you're reading independently. First, a reminder of the fable of the tortoise and the hare. And the moral slow and steady wins the race, which is great advice when you do get stuck on big unfamiliar words. And I'll use unfamiliar as an example. Think of these words as races. There is a finish line. And if you read like the hair, you might want to get to that finish line as quickly as you can. You'll zip through big words like this. That's where mistakes can easily happen. But if you read like the tortoise, you take it slow and steady when you come to these words. That patience is definitely going to improve your ability to decode them. Very important. All right, let's look at the words that I highlighted from that passage first. I'm going to start at the end of this word. Only because I think it's interesting, this GR consonant here. That is very easily confused because the G has two sounds. That's easily confused with DR. So take a look, that's drate, that's great. Drait, not to be confused with great. This word starts with den, and there's an I in the middle. Did you notice that I, denigrate? Yeah, this is the word denigrate. It's a verb, and it originates in old Latin, denigratus. And that means basically to stain. And this part of the Latin word denigratus was kept in English and they added an E at some point in history and we have the word denigrate now. It's not a good word. Denigrate means to insult or to criticize among other meanings. Denigrate. All right, the next word I show you, I'm gonna focus on this syllable here because like I was saying, G has two sounds. All right, let's talk about this letter G real quick. I'm gonna give you something to, to keep in your memory to recall the two sounds of G, all right? And to help, I want you to think about geese. Silly as it sounds, think about geese, all right? Now hold your hand up. This is the sign language for the letter G. And if you think of it, it kind of looks like a goose head. So there are two types of people out there, people who like geese, people who don't like geese. If you like geese, you might think geese are gentle giants. Hold your hand up and go, j -j -j -j. that's one of the sounds of G. If you don't like geese, all right, you might think, good, geese are gross. Good, good, good. So hold your hand up and go, good, good, good. That's the other sound of G, a hard G sound. All right, two sounds of G. When a G is followed by an E, you can be sure that's going to be a soft G. That says gen. All right, you see it in words like germs, genius, and there's gen. So that's, uh, is that jenner or gener? Our controlled vowel sound there towards the end. There's the word rate. Oh yeah, there's a word, generate. That's a word, so degenerate. Yeah, this is the word degenerate. Well, actually, the verb, this word is degenerate. You hear eight at the end. But the noun and the adjective are pronounced differently. They're pronounced degenerate. All right, so either way, that word originates in Latin as well. Degeneratus, degeneratus, which comes from the Latin word generis. And that has to do with birth, that Latin word there. And this Latin prefix D, that means off or away, among other things. And so degeneritus in Latin means to be inferior to family. Think uh, to disappoint parents is one way to think about that. All right. So this part of the Latin word degeneritus was kept in English. They added an E at some point. And we have the word degenerate or degenerate. Eight is the verb. That means to become weaker or to decline physically, mentally, or morally. All right, degenerate, the noun and the adjective pronounced degenerate. The noun is a corrupt or a bad person. Right? And the adjective degenerate means having lost qualities considered normal or having become weak or worse. So it's a complicated word. You can think of, uh, uh, you probably had a laptop and it's laying around somewhere that doesn't really work anymore. You can think of it as a, a degenerate laptop. It's weaker or worse than when you first got it. Degenerate or degenerate. The next word I showed you starts with inter. 
I think it starts with inter. There's the R controlled vowel sound, E-R, er. There's rel and late. Oh yeah, that's a word, relate. And of course, related. So this is the word interrelated. It's an adjective or a past tense verb. A root word is interrelate, a verb. And of course, everyone knows the word relate and the past tense related. Just put a D on that. Inter is a Latin prefix. And inter in Latin, uh, that means between or among. Interrelated means connected together. Interrelated. And the last word also looks like it starts with inter, right? The R, R controlled vowel sound, er. And there's that, is that rod or raj? Well, with that G followed by an A, I mean, we were talking about G before, that's definitely gate. There's, so there's what uh, open syllable, ro, gate, rogated. This is the word interrogated. It's a past tense verb. The uh, root word is interrogate. And the trick to this word is that ER, which typically makes er. It sounds like air, interrogate. So you need to know that about ER. It can sometimes make the sound air. <whistles> Thought that might blow you away. <laughs> so you might be tempted to spell it with air or the word tear, like tear paper. But it's inter, spelled interrogate, but interrogate is pronounced that way. And the Latin prefix inter, meaning between, and rogatus in Latin means to ask or to question. So interrogatus in Latin uh, means questions between two parties, like talking to each other, but asking questions. And so this part of the Latin word interrogatus was kept in English, and E was added, and we have the interrogate, which means to question, but kind of suspicious, suspiciously, like, where were you? What do you think you're doing? Interrogate. Add a D and you get interrogated, past tense verb. Inter, right? Remember, ER can sometimes sound like tear, air. Interrogated. All right, we're going to end here with one more passage. Get ready to read this one too. I want you to, you're going to hit pause, read it out loud to whoever you're there with. Ready? This is uh, especially for you. Practice some of the things we just talked about. What does this say? Read it out loud, hit pause. All right, that's it for today's lesson. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, channel or follow me on Facebook for more decoding videos like this one. Tell a friend, a family member, or a teacher about me. Spread the good word. At my Facebook page, there's a photo album you can find. It's full of reading challenges I've written to help you continue practice decoding those big words and to awesomeize your fluency, which is why I'm here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Found it helpful. Come back and see me soon. Bye.